And so that's where it's found. It's extremely rare on the surface, and yet it's enriched more than a factor of 100 in this layer. Uh, there are other things in this layer that indicate something happened. There's a lot of shocked quartz that shows an explosion. There's lots of soot, which indicates a global burning. And the whole story that they pulled together was if an asteroid hit, and they could estimate the size of the asteroid from the amount of iridium, if an asteroid 15 kilometers in diameter struck, it could produce all of these effects. It could produce a global firestorm because the material that was excavated from the crater would go up thousands of kilometers and fall back down and give up its energy into the atmosphere. It could produce a collapse of photosynthesis from the black dust that would be in the atmosphere uh, for years. And it was much more than a very bad day. It was truly a global catastrophe in which we can imagine, in terms of individuals, far more than 99% died. And only relatively few were able to survive. And that story is told in this little half-inch thick layer, uh, which is found not only in Gubbio, but everywhere on Earth where this, uh, this area is preserved. Well, we're pretty sure we know what happened, especially once the crater was found. The largest known impact crater on Earth called Chicxulub, which is in the uh, Yucatan and is buried under a couple of thousand feet of sediment. So it's not exactly obvious on the surface. But one impact with 15 kilometers diameter could produce atmospheric heating, producing a global firestorm, followed by cold and uh, and it an insult, if you will, uh, to the life on Earth that it took a while to, to come, come to re regain. And the dinosaurs didn't make it at all. Not one single dinosaur uh, survived after that. Our ancestors, the mammals, didn't do too well. Half of their species went out. An uh, awful lot of things went extinct. Uh, so the evolution changed its direction because of this, this random external event uh, which had nothing to do with the normal course of evolutionary events. It provides us a new perspective on, on natural selection. Uh, I'm not going to try to do, go this in detail, but just to give you the, the basic idea. The classical Darwinian view is a uniformitarian view in which the environment changes gradually and creatures adapt through natural selection to the changing environment and to competition. And this is what we all learned in grade school. You know, the, the dinosaur that could run faster would catch the one that couldn't run so fast. Or the, uh, the giraffe with a long neck could reach and get leaves that something else couldn't. And you would have all of this constant adaptation to be a little faster, a little stronger, a little smarter, or whatever it was. And that's the normal dynamic of evolution. Now we introduce something completely from left field, where there suddenly is an external catastrophe not predicted, nothing is adapted for it, and the rules are changed. Now, it doesn't help to be smarter, or bigger, or run faster. In fact, the, the, on the case of land animals, the ones that survived were the little creatures that, uh, that could dig a hole and hibernate until the bad, bad times were over. Or things like crocodiles in swamps that could dig down into the mud uh, or, or plants that produced fire-resistant seeds so that they could just lie fallow for several years and then come back. And so you have a whole different pace of evolution that occasionally interrupts the normal uniformitarian ones. And the, the genes that allow you to survive the catastrophe are not necessarily the ones that have been selected for in the tens of millions of years between catastrophes. So... It's a kind of strange thing that, that comes about, that, that we are here, for instance, because our ancestors were able to survive that impact. The dinosaurs are not here because they couldn't. And when we talk about catastrophes, of course, there's nothing much more sudden than running into an asteroid. And in the case of the, the dinosaurs, which are land animals, uh, and many of them quite large, I think it's pretty clear what killed most all of them, and that was this firestorm from the ejecta falling back, which happens about 20 minutes after the impact. So somebody asks you, how long did it take the dinosaurs to go extinct, and are expecting you to say, well, a million years or half a million. The right answer is about 20 minutes. Uh, and uh, a lot of other things went extinct, too. So we have a, a different dynamic here to study. And it can still happen. 
There's nothing about the Cretaceous impact 65 million years ago uh, that, that is any different from now. Remember, that was less than 2% of the age of the Earth looking backward in time. This was not some ancient period of, of heavy impacts. And we occasionally have, uh, have reminders of this today. Uh, have you all heard or read something about the uh, Peruvian impact last month? No? I, I wondered how much it was actually uh, being... In the newspapers, it, it probably not. Probably the reason you haven't seen much is it's such a gosh awful place. The television crews haven't gotten there yet. It's uh, on the shores of Lake Titicaca, at about twelve thousand to thirteen thousand feet in Peru. In fact, it's right on the Peru-Bolivian border, and the information that is filtered out is very unclear. And uh, for a while, most of us were really quite skeptical that it was was a real impact at all. But there is this crater, which is. Uh, about uh, 12 meters in diameter and several meters deep, filled with water. Uh, you can see it's right on the edge of this lake. And the one thing that, that makes you think this really might be real is that some scientists uh, from Lima went up and collected fragments like this, which really do appear to be meteoritic. They appear to be from space. They have not dug down to find whatever the central object was. And the latest story I heard today was that they're saying the crater itself is unlikely to last more than two or three months because it's basically on the edge of a lake and the mud is just going to flow in and it's going to be a mess. So they're going to have to go up there and, and figure out what really happened. From the point of view of those of us who study impacts, <coughs> it's really, really very strange because the thing I want to emphasize about the hazard of impacts, which we'll be coming to, is that they hurt you really only if the cosmic body strikes the Earth at cosmic velocity, which is like 20 kilometers per second. Not as fast as a speeding bullet. Much, much more than that. And the alternative of just being hit by a meteorite, a rock from space, is really not anything you have to worry about. In the case of a meteorite, if it hits you on the head, you die. But if it lands six feet away, all it does is splatter dirt on you. Uh, because they just aren't going that fast. It's like a stone dropped from an airplane. In the case of something that still has its cosmic velocity, when it hits, it explodes, in effect, and produces a huge crater and all kinds of damage. And the atmosphere generally protects us from those. Well, it looks like something strange went on here. I do not think from the appearance of that crater that this thing came in at cosmic velocity. It looks more like just a rock dropped from an airplane, although I'm not seriously suggesting that what happened. I don't know how a rock that size would get through the atmosphere. I'm still skeptical, but at least it does help show us that the things are happening that we don't necessarily understand. And this one is another one. Um, this week... A paper was published in the publications of the National Academy of Sciences with a whole mess of authors uh, indicating evidence for an impact that took place just 12,900 years ago. Not 65 million, like the dinosaur killing one, but a mere blink of the cosmic clock. And they think this may have been the cause of the extinction of the megafauna in North America, like mastodons and mammoths. And I don't know if that's credible or not, because, again, the, their suggestion that this was some kind of comet shower, not a single impact, but a whole bunch of impacts, none of which produced a crater, seems to be calling on a kind of object out there that we've never seen. I hate to be presenting such inconclusive stuff, but I just wanted to, to show you that there are things out there right now that we do not understand. And I'll give you the whole rest of the talk as though I know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, but, but remember, I don't. <laughs>